Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this flower applique checkerboard pot holder. So let's get started. This is my large print fabric and I'm going to use this flower. So when you're looking at your fabric, to pick out the colors for your checkerboard, look at some of the other colors in your large print fabric. So for my checkerboard, I've selected an orange fabric and a yellow fabric. As you're cutting your pieces out, leave a little bit of fabric all the way around the edge. Here's a piece of my Pellon fusible web and you, it's got two layers of paper on it and in between the layers of paper is glue. So on one side it's the blue grid line side and then on the other it's just plain paper. So for this particular applique project I need to remove this white paper off the back. Now, if you have problems getting it to come off, just take a straight pin and tear that, bend it, and wait for a little piece to pop up. There it is. And then pull it off. Take the back side of your applique fabric and place it on the glue side. Then finger press it all over. Get it on there really good. Then take your scissors and go ahead and cut right on the edge of your applique design. So here's my two leaves. I've already done them. Here's the blue grid line paper on one side and then the leaf is on the other side. Before you fuse it on, you have to center this, so figure out where you want it all placed. So I've got my flower in the middle, and I'm going to use these two leaves. Oh, they're going to go something like this, okay? So play around with your design and see how you can get it all centered so you get an idea of where to place everything. So it's going to be something like that. Then begin lifting it off. Be careful you don't lift the glue off. Make sure that glue is still sticking to the fabric. Then just set it down. Don't finger press anything just yet. Then take the rest of your pieces and remove the glue, I mean, excuse me, remove the paper, set it underneath your flower, and then take your other piece that, that you're going to use. Maybe you're only using two, but I'm going to use three. Lift up your flower and put it in there. Now, I haven't finger pressed yet. Just make sure you like the way it's laid out. And if you do, then go ahead and finger press it down. The fusing part you need to do at your ironing board or a pressing mat. So it calls for on your instructions on the package for you to put a damp cloth over your design. I usually just keep uh, a bottle of spray water a spray bottle I should say and I dampen it real good then you're going to use a hot iron with steam and you're going to give it a burst of steam and hold it for 12 to 15 seconds then lift if you need to cover some more area and give another burst of steam and hold for 12 to 15 seconds and you would do that until the entire applique piece is fused on then I recommend you let it cool for several minutes. Next step is to decide what applique stitches you want. The applique stitches are going to go around the edge of your design. Here are some 
from my sewing machine. These here are very traditional applique stitches that look like hand stitching. And then of course you have a variety of satin stitches. If you don't have one that looks like the satin stitch on your machine, take your zigzag stitch and tighten it up and then you'll find that it'll probably turn into a satin stitch. For me, I'm going to use one of these two right here. So when you're doing your applique stitches, I recommend you use an open toe presser foot and you would keep the center of that presser foot right on the edge of your design and stitch around. Now if you've never done applique stitching before, I highly recommend you practice them on scrap fabric, practice going around curves and corners so that whenever you have to turn and go around a corner or a curve, you may, I recommend you keep the needle down, lift up the presser foot so you don't lose your spot, turn it a little bit, lower the presser foot, and continue stitching. Now there's a stitching order that I recommend that you do. Whatever is on the bottom, my large green leaf is below the flower and the orange flower. So I'm going to do that first. The second one would be the orange flower because it's on top of it and do that. Then your flower last. Make sure you use some sort of stabilizer underneath. You can either use thin paper like I usually do or use tear away stabilizer which I still use that too. Decide on your threads. Now some people like to use completely different colors on their applique. You can make everything all one color if you like. I'm going to make each one a matching color. I just finished putting all the stitches around the edges. Now when you're done with all of your decorative stitching, turn it over and just tear the paper off the back. It should come off pretty easily. To make the checkerboard piece at the bottom, take two strips that are tw about 12 inches long, one and a half inches wide, bring front sides together and stitch one quarter inch the full length. Then go to your ironing board and press this seam. And then unfold and press again and press the seam towards this darker fabric. Then after you've done that, you're going to cut one and a half inch wide pieces along the way. So take your ruler and place the one and a half inch line down here and then you're going to cut your pieces. And you would continue on down and cutting seven all together. Place them like this and then you're going to stitch them together. So take the first two, bring front sides together and then line your seams up. This is real important. The seam on the bottom should be going in the opposite direction than the one on top. Stitch one quarter inch along there and continue stitching them until you have all seven together. Attach the checkerboard to the bottom like this. Bring it on top so you have front sides together. Stitch one quarter inch along the bottom then press your seam on the back side unfold and press on top and push this seam towards the checkerboard bottom. To layer the fabrics, take your fabric for the back and place it to where the front side of the fabric, the pretty side, is down. Then your two layers of cotton batting and remember you can also use one layer of Insulbrite and one layer of cotton batting if you like. And then take your top piece scatter straight pins all over it and then you're going to do quilting stitches all over it and here are some suggested patterns you can do straight stitches going up and down and then side to side you can also go at a corner so you would do all your corner to corner one way and then turn it and do the other way if you have this stitch on there, it's called a serpentine stitch, wavy line, you can do the same thing going up and down and then side to side and also you can do corner to corner. 
When you're doing your quilting stitches, I also refer to it as top stitching, it's best if you can use a foot like this. It's called a walking foot. And this helps to prevent the layers of your fabric from shifting because it's so thick now. You can get these on the internet or at sewing machine stores. I bought mine off of Amazon. You just go on to Amazon, enter the name of your sewing machine, and that you want a walking foot, and different options will appear. After getting all of your top stitching, quilt stitching done, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trim some of the corner off just to kind of give it a different look. So take your ruler and place the corner of your ruler at one side. Then take the two inch line and push it against the other side. Okay? And once you've got that lined up, then just go ahead and trim it off and continue doing the other corners. If you're not sure how to cut out a strip of binding, here's how you would go about doing it. Keep your fabric folded with the selvage edges together. Have your folded edge up here going on a line straight across on your cutting mat. You need to straighten out this edge first, so make sure that this raw edge is pulled past one of the lines on your mat. And mine's quite jagged, so I'm going to have to really straighten it out. Line up your ruler on the lines on your cutting mat. And straighten out this edge. Now, I like to cut my binding a little wider than most people. Whatever the width you want to cut it, you would move your ruler over. Do not move your fabric. I'm going to move my ruler over two and three quarter inches. And that's because that's how uh, wide I like my binding. So you would move your ruler over, then go ahead and cut your strip of binding. And of course, if you ever need to cut more than one strip, you would just move your fabric, your, excuse me, you would move your ruler over again and cut. Then, before you use your binding strips, you need to cut the selvage edges off. So place your ruler there on the edge and cut off the selvages. To prepare the binding to put on the pot holder, fold one end of the binding over one quarter of an inch and press it with your iron. Then fold the binding strip in half and press it all the way down the full length of the strip. Take the folded end of the binding and place it up here at the top center and place it right next to your pin mark and then go ahead and pin it down and you're going to pin down to this first little corner here and then you're going to stitch three-eighths of an inch from this edge in. And you're going to stitch down, to, I'm going to remove the pin so you can see a little bit. You're going to stitch right down to where this corner is here. So when you get there, you leave your needle down in the pot holder. Lift up your presser foot, turn the pot holder, and then turn your fabric and fold it over a little bit like that and then stitch down to the next corner and keep doing that all the way around but you're going to stop right here. So I'm going to begin stitching 3 eighths of an inch from this raw edge. So I'm going to stitch down to that first corner. Now I'm going to, my presser foot automatically comes up when I stop, but if yours doesn't, make sure your needle is down, you lift up that presser foot, and let your fabric fold just a little bit, and begin stitching down to the next corner. I'm almost there, and now I'm going to stop going to let the fabric fold just a little bit 
as I go around this corner you kind of have to pull on your binding and then stitch it down and you keep stitching you're going to keep doing this all the way around now I'm almost back where I started and as I'm stitching I'm going to stop right next to this end of the binding so you kind of feel it with your finger just a little bit and stitch right up to it but not up over the top of it getting just a little closer and I'm there and I'm going to back stitch a little bit and take it out now the next thing you want to do is at all of these corners okay right here let me see if I can see it in the camera. Yes, I can. You're going to clip so that this binding lays a little flatter. Because you've got these little folds right here. But we got to clip this so that this will lay flat right in through here. You want to do that at all your corners. After stitching the binding on, then take the binding and fold it over towards the back. And when you get to your corners, you want to kind of tug on it a little bit to get it to come up over those corners. Then leaving it on the back side facing up, you're going to trim the excess binding strip off. Now I've already done that, but from the top edge here of the pot holder, go over four and a half inches. One, two, three, four and a half. And cut the excess binding strip off. Then you're going to fold the end, excuse me, you're going to cut this little square out first. So go in about a quarter of an inch and cut in this way, and then about an inch over this way. Now you're only cutting through one layer, not both. Fold this edge over one quarter inch and do this at your ironing board so it comes out really nice. So press it here on the very end. And so once you've got it pressed, it looks like this right now. Now you're going to take this raw edge here, fold it in like that towards the middle, about a quarter of an inch or so, and press it with your iron all the way down. Then fold the two sides together. You're basically folding it in half. And again, press it with your iron. To pin the binding down, you need to take this folded edge and pull it past your stitch line that you had from the front when you were stitching it on. So take this folded edge and pull it past. If you don't pull it past, then when you go to stitch all this to, down from the front, it's not going to catch that lower edge and you're going to wonder what happened. So make sure you pull it past. I can't stress that enough. Now when you come to the corners, put a pin just before the corner and just after. And you're going to have this little bump. So I'm going to show you how to address this little bump. Take your straight pin, press down and in, fold it over just a little bit, and pin and it kind of rhymes press down and in sorry fold over and pin so you'll have these little pin tucks at every corner so you want to do that all the way around and remember bring the folded edge past the stitch line after you've done that then you're going to start right here at this point and stitch in the ditch and that's between your background fabric here and your binding you're gonna stitch real close leave your walking foot on if you have one because it's gonna make it really easy to sew and remember this is also very thick when you come to corners leave your needle down lift up the presser foot turn your pot holder and to stitch down to the next corner. 
you're going to do that all the way around and I'm going to show you here at my sewing machine how to finish up this piece up here. I'm just about done doing the stitch in the ditch and I'm approaching the spot where the two ends of the binding meet. Now make sure this end of the binding is folded up properly underneath. Now I want you to take that binding and pull it out and away from the pot holder and continue stitching. When you get to where the two ends of the binding meet, leave your needle down and the presser foot is up. Turn your pot holder and you're going to begin stitching right over the edge of this. And just keep going, making sure that your binding is folded together, otherwise this isn't going to work. And you would continue stitching all the way down to the end of the binding. When you get to the end down there at the corner, you're going to leave your needle down, press her foot is up, turn it, and stitch across the very end. And then finish it off, back stitch a few times, and then of course cut your threads. Take the end of your binding and just turn it around like this to where it's underneath the binding on the back side and just turn this over and pin it down and I'm sorry if my hand keeps getting in the way I just can't seem to quite keep it out of the camera and pin it down now once you have it pinned down from the front, you're going to do a little square stitch You're gonna or rectangle. You're going to stitch across here, down, over, and back up. And that will secure the back side of it. So let me get it underneath my needle. I'm going to lower my needle down in exactly where I want to start. And begin stitching. Stitch across. And then turn this. Always leave your needle down when you turn. And then stitch down a few stitches. And turn it again. And stitch across. And stitch back up. I'm going to turn it one more time. And stitch back and forth a couple of times. and then you're done. If you are interested in making the matching coffee cup mug rug or even this pretty toaster cover, play this video to the very end where you will see a green screen and then click on the links. If you like this video, please click on thumbs up and also click on share to share this video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed yet then click on that red button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen click on that little bell and then enter your email address so that you'll receive future email notifications about my latest video if you don't seem to be receiving those notifications Go to your cell phone, click on settings, and set notifications in the on position. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny. Thanks again for coming by. See you next time. Happy sewing!